pussy is not worth $150 million. Eddie Murphy and Barbarossa, 100k subscriber special. Welcome to Manosphere Highlights Daily. Manosphere, we did it. 100k subscribers. This means a lot and it also says a lot about the times we're living in today. Men are waking up. Men are forced to wake up because of the confusion we have to deal with and female nature that is fully expressed in modern society. And when you're confused, chances are high that you'll be looking for answers, guidance, a light in the dark. And once upon a time, we, the MHD crew, were looking for answers as well. Therefore, we must pay our respects to the men who have opened our eyes and given us a light in the darkness, inspiring us to spread the information to help others. For me personally, it started with this man here. You got to be careful. You got to have a J-O-B in the 80s. You got to have some money. You got to have some money. You can't get no pussy. Listen to the radio. That's what it's about. Listen to Madonna. I'm a material girl in a material world. You ain't got no money. You can't have no pussy. <laughs> Basically what it is. There's a song out now called Got to Have a J-O-B if you want to be with me. And the lyrics go, ain't nothing going on but the rent. Like if you went up and said, hey, babe, what's going on? The rent, motherfucker. Do you have a job? Well, I, 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 I get the fuck out of my face. Eddie Murphy. This is from the show called Raw, released in 1987. And what he says in this show hits so much harder in 2022 because it has only gotten worse since then. Janet Jackson got a hit record. What have you done for me lately? That's what they think is, what have you done for me lately? The record start off like that. I know he used to do shit for you, but what has he done for you lately? <laughs> Baby, I love you. What have you done for me lately? You the only thing on my mind. What have you done for me lately? We make good love. What have you done for me lately? Got to have some money to get some pussy in the 80s. Good comedy always has the truth in it. When I saw this as a kid, I knew he was not lying. My mom and my aunties always wanted money and stuff like that. But the quote unquote, what have you done for me lately part, I had to figure that out the hard way. So I was looking for like-minded people. And when YouTube came out in 2005, 2006, it was like the wild, wild west. But it was cool to listen to some like-minded people out there. And for me personally, the guy that would break it down to a molecule and gave me the information that I was looking for was Barbarossa. I will show with statistics and data, not with sloganeering about Marxism or defeating the left, but with hard data that once sufficient mechanization occurs within a society, once sufficient affluence is developed, once women can sustain themselves without the need of the male dispensary that extends to them its labor, they will reject it almost immediately and from almost any alternative available. And overhead it says, Johnny's wife wants half Johnny's money. Now turn that shit back to Johnny. Then I start thinking about it. Half. If you if you have five dollars and have to give somebody two fifty, you'd be upset. Johnny had to have at least three hundred million, and have to give up a hundred and fifty million dollars, and they weren't even married but ten years, and a hundred and fifty million dollars. Uh, ah, get uh, give me a fucking break. Eddie Murphy is talking about losing half of your money in divorce, and the way he explains it, it immediately made sense to me. And pay attention to this. What? What? And ladies, if, no, here's a woman I'm gonna say, right on. No, you can't, that, baby, that's not fair. Not no 150 million. I see a lot of you ladies tonight going, get all the money. You can, shit. I'm glad she did get all that money. She earned it. She earned it. That you damn right. She was married to him. She deserved that money. Get the fuck out of my face with that bullshit. No. Stop it. Do you see that? Eddie Murphy was not joking here. He was serious when he said, this is not fair. And how women respond to another woman taking a man's money. Get the F out of here. And this is when I asked my big brother, can a woman just take half of your money? This really got me thinking as a kid. And this is where Barbarossa comes in. My theory is a simple extension of Brifolt's law scaled up to traditional relationships between men and women and is as follows. Where the woman is in a traditional relationship, she will remain so under the following circumstances. A. There exists societal pressures that shame women for initiating divorce. And B. There exists limited or non-existent opportunities for women to acquire resources without having to trade sexual favors to her husband. The question that should be posed 
is to what degree is the traditional Western family unit, or more specifically, the women within them, are there based on financial motives? Now, if this traditional family unit isn't predicated on what, when stripped of its social decoration, amounts to no more than a long-term arrangement of prostitution, then we should not see any noticeable changes to its integrity when women are given the financial means to abandon it. There should exist stop gaps, romantic love, fidelity, loyalty, a woman's dedication to family and husband, all of the things that traditionalists cite as the glue that holds the nuclear family unit together. In modern times, divorce is applauded. A woman taking a man's money is applauded. And like Barbarossa explained, all the other factors that are supposed to be the foundation of marriage don't mean shit to her because she can't make her own money and nobody will hold her accountable for being a terrible wife. Barbarossa made it clear that this is not about hating women. It's indifference. All you have to do, you marry a man with $300 million, is fuck your husband. That's it. That's your job. Fuck your husband. That's it. That's just fuck your husband. You fill out a W-2, they say, what you do? You say, I fucked my husband. That's it. And I've had my share of pussy. I have yet, even if the pussy was great and Spock shot out the woman's ass and tannins bled and the mountains crumbled and the seas roared, no pussy is worth $150 million. No pussy. This one fucked me up real good. I'll never forget this line. As a kid, I knew nothing about punani, so you don't know how to value a punani. But the moment I became experienced, that's when I really understood what Eddie Murphy was talking about. And it just hits harder in 2022. The value of punani has only decreased since the 80s. So it's foolishness to lose half of your stuff just for punani. And Barbarossa just kills this argument in this clip. Is your sexual recompense such that it alleviates all the pressures and stresses exerted on your husband? Now, in physics we study force, and the laws of physics state that when no net force is exerted on an object, then the object is in a state of rest, meaning that if one force is exerting more force than the other, then it's not at rest. So if that said, is your sex counteracting the force exerted on your husband such that the forces exerted onto him by his 70 hour work week are negated? If they aren't, then you and the sex that you dole out are an inadequate recompense for his efforts. We want solely for the interests of men to find out whether or not the traditional wife provides enough bang for her buck, so to speak, in the hopes of furthering the interests of the men listening to this, and if we arrive at the conclusion that your sex is not commensurate, then we will, regardless of what the traditional homemakers have to say about it, pressure more and more men to do away with their desire to provide for a woman. So we ask then, who gets the better deal? The one giving out the sex or the one working to support the one giving it out in hopes of continued access to it. Makes sense, right? It's a raw deal, fellas. That's why we talk about low quality women, because if the punani is the only thing they have to offer, then they are not worth the dedication. And then what's really fucked up is that y'all are the most loving people. American women are all off into this romance, want to be romantic, and they generally fall in love with you. Now, love and money do not mix. The shit don't mix, especially you got a business smart woman and then love and shit. You go up to a woman and say, baby, I never met anybody like you before in my life. She, I never met anyone like you either. Why don't we be together? Why don't we be together? Baby, will you marry me? I thought you would never ask. Well, before we get married, why don't you sign this prenuptial agreement? What do you mean sign a prenuptial agreement? Well, that's a contract that stipulates if we would ever break up. You take what you had when you came into the relationship and I take what I had. He mentions a prenup on this show, and the way he portrays a woman who hears about it is genius. Love and money don't mix, and Barbarossa explains why. Women would not act in this way. They would not reject traditionalism so dramatically once the chance arose if they had any desire to be in or any general respect for the institution of traditional marriage. They do not become traditional wives for the naive vision of romantic love that traditionalist men are so prone to believe in. Uh, when they have the opportunity to subsist without, they do so blatantly and without hesitation, and at least in that aspect, I am happy for women. I'm happy that women don't have to live under this fake, unfulfilling marriage contract that they derive no satisfaction from. The true women haters are the ones that demand women submit to them, uh, that women allow themselves to be led because it's their natural role, uh, supposedly, when women clearly don't want any of it, collectively speaking, of course. Now, my only problem is when women use the state to financially extort men, 
when they use government to legally steal money and resources they didn't earn. My problem is not with women wanting nothing to do with a traditionalist bully that needs to exercise financial control over a woman to get her to pretend to want him. My problem is with the women that are so lazy that they're happy lying to men about the love and affection she has for them, knowing damn well that if she had a more convenient opportunity to support herself, she would never even associate with her husband. Both the wife and the husband in the traditionalist relationship are operating under a lie, a farce that requires both parties to willingly suspend reality. That's essentially what traditionalism is. Men that have otherwise no chance of having access to certain women offer what women do want from them, i.e. male labor, while pretending that the relationship or the marriage or family that ensues is not there solely because of the labor he is offering. For the guys that follow this channel, you know that I took my talents overseas and Eddie Murphy talks about this as well. Because I ain't getting caught. I refuse to get caught out there. I fuck that. And I'm bring home and lock up in the house. You go off to Africa and get you a bush woman, you can't let her mingle with American women because they'll change that shit up. American women stick together. The last thing they want to see is you got some trained bush bitch in your house. They will catch her by herself in the kitchen and throw a monkey wrench in your whole program. As soon as they get alone, they'll be like, I can't stand it. He'll be running behind him doing everything he tell you to do. Who you think he is? You, you ain't no God. You a human being. You ain't supposed to treat nobody. This house is too big for one person to be cleaned up. Why don't you leave? You, you always crying. Why don't you just leave a nigga? Oh, you know something, girl. Do you know you can take half this money? Did you know you can take half this money? Did you know that? Don't bring your foreign wife back here. It's funny because it's true. Barbarossa also touches on this. So gentlemen, uh, what is this about? I mean, what is traditionalist marriage about to women really? It's about resources, and in this day and age, that means cold hard cash, to the point where it can be statistically predicted when women will begin to jump ship. Now, one can make the argument that these are not bona fide traditional women we're talking about, but the women in the West that have already been coached by 50 years of feminist influence. And in response to that, uh, this is where we look to Asia, for example, of highly traditional cultures where once economic independence became an option for women, they jumped ship in an even shorter amount of time than their American counterparts, one or two decades compared to four or five here in the West. We have China, who saw roughly two decades and a half of industrial revolution from about 1960 to 1985 during its period of readjustment, which set China on the path to economic competition with the West in modernity. Uh, the Chinese, from about 2000 onward, have been experiencing the type of growth and mechanization that is followed essentially, without exception, by increased affluence and economic opportunity for women. It comes as no surprise that the divorce rate has been steadily climbing and initiated by women in the majority. The information has been out there for a while now, and we have to make sure that we continue to spread this information. Barbarossa's channel is still up there. He's not really posting anymore, but brother Barbarossa, Thank you for educating and inspiring us. And of course, big up to all the content creators of the Manosphere. We've been watching a lot of you guys and you inspired us to start this channel. And don't forget, it's not just content creators who made the Manosphere. It's you watching every day, like in the videos and commenting every day. That makes this space what it is today. Thank you guys so much for your support. They leave me in the kitchen with some bush bitch with an attitude. Eddie! Eddie! I want to talk to you! What's your problem, baby? I don't like the way you treat me, Eddie! You treat me like an animal! You was butt naked on a zebra last month. I don't care, Eddie. I'm an American woman now. I want what's coming to me. Eddie, what have you done for me lately? Manosphere, we working. Protect yourself at all times. This video has officially been highlighted. highlighted.